Next Monday is an important milestone on both Oahu and Maui, with the defueling of Red Hill scheduled to begin, and on the Valley Isle, the reopening of West Maui schools. Joining us now to discuss is Hawaii Senator Maisie Hirono. Aloha and good morning, Senator. Good morning. Aloha, Sam. You got to visit Maui on Tuesday. What did you get to learn? I was there to, I've been getting regular updates on the recovery efforts, et cetera, from FEMA and SBA and others, but on Tuesday I was on island and I spoke with the Army Corps of Engineers. They are involved, among other things, in building temporary school uh, to replace King Kamehameha Elementary, but uh, I also visited with three principals of the schools that will be opening. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, the air quality and all of that is, is good. So the principal said their students are very resilient, but at the same time acknowledging that they've been through a lot. And so there will be n need for counseling and therapy services as the kids come back to school. We talked to the governor earlier this week. He said it might be a bumpy reopening in West Maui for the schools that happens on Monday. Anything you feel like needs to happen between now and then to make this well, go a little bit Well, when I met with the principals, they were getting ready for a non-bumpy okay. reopening. But as I said, you know, I think they're really prepared to doing the best they can to welcome the, the kids back who have been through a lot. Switching gears to Red Hill, the defueling process is also scheduled to yes. begin on Monday. This is something that the military had fought against tooth and nail dating back years. I remember in 2019 there was some local legislation to get those tanks defueled eventually. Uh, that didn't go through. But do you feel like they have enough investment in this process to oh, make certainly. sure that this happens safely? You know, once the Department of Defense said that they were going to close Red Hill, which was a big deal, and I had certainly been pushing for that and, and working with the, the Secretary of the uh, uh, Department of Defense and the Deputy secretary to close Red Hill and for that decision that was a huge uh, milestone for the people of Hawaii and Oahu so the defueling is a milestone safety first and as mentioned it is uh, with the okay of uh, EPA and the State Department of Health but I will be there for the opening and we, we need to make sure that all of that happens with as much transparency and safety as possible and I have been assured by Commander Wade of the task force that they are very, very aware of what needs to happen. At the same time, let's make sure that we're not just dealing with the defueling, but the aftermath of defueling and the closure that's still gonna require resources. Defueling itself is gonna be a billion dollar process. Yeah, Joint Task Force says that the EPA and the DOH, like you said, will be on hand to, to yes. be with, as, as will you. Uh, do you feel like the accountability in that regard is in place for this? We're going to make sure that it is, and I think at this point, you know, the Navy realizes, especially that they need to have the confidence of the community restored as, as far as their actions. So they are very aware of the need to do this safely and, and with, um, as I said, uh, integrity and, and uh, disclosing everything that they're doing. And switching gears a little bit to Israel's conflict right now with Hamas, obviously a very complicated situation that's been happening for years, but we saw what happened with the terrorist attacks, uh, truly horrific situation. The U.S. is sending arms over to Israel, uh, but being that the situation in Gaza is what it is, right, you're talking about an area the size of Lanai that has 2 million people, 40% yes. of those are under the age of 14. Are you concerned about the uh, effects of potential bombs and airstrikes in that area with so many children and innocent lives being in that area? Uh, of, of course, this war needs to end. And um, there are all kinds of uh, speculation as to what Hamas's end game is. But first and foremost, our country, uh, our country's commitment, as the president said, and what has been described as the strongest support by uh, any president for Israel, he said that our support of Israel is ironclad. We have been providing uh, military aid for Israel to the tune of something in the order of $3 billion a year in addition to making sure that Iron Dome, which is one of their major, if not the major, defense system against the Hamas rockets being shot, thousands of rockets, the Iron Dome uh, is um, armed. Uh, with uh, with what it needs. So we have been doing that for a long time. We will continue because we know that Israel has the right to defend itself and we have an our commitment to help them at the same time. This war is horrifying for all concerned. It needs to end. Uh, so, you know, we have a carrier group there to make sure that there is a deterrence from our end to deter uh, Hezbollah of Lebanon or Iran or any other entity from getting engaged in a way that will expand the war. And that is not what we want to see happening. So a carrier group involves thousands of sailors in that part of the world as a, as a deterrent. 
We are doing everything we can, we will be doing everything we can to support Israel. But <laughs> the House needs to organize itself. And right now, the Republicans are engaged in infighting and uh, uh, power plays, and that needs to end because we need to be poised to support Israel, but um, let's not forget Ukraine at yeah. the same time. Could get a vote soon in the House. Hopefully, we get some semblance of peace soon yes. in the Middle East. Yes. Senator Hirono, thank you so prayer. much. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Take care. You too.